And that was the wheel from the Spear of Destiny LP, the epic years. My guest in the studio tonight, when I open the microphone, it's Kirk. Kirk Binder, welcome to the show. Thanks. Um, you found us okay. I, I was just saying to you that I actually introduced you on Sunday at Sport Aid. I, I didn't realize until, I think the week before I knew I was interviewing you, I forgot all about it. I sort of come and said hello and said, you know, don't forget yeah, next week. Yeah. Did, you, did you enjoy doing Sport Aid? I thought it was a good day. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. They, they didn't show us playing here in this country. For whatever reason. Well, that was when they reviewed, they reviewed it that night, didn't they? Yeah. And they didn't show me on stage. Oh, right, right. Great. But it went out worldwide, so we're all right. There's certainly a massive audience. I think there's 18,000 in Sheffield and a worldwide audience of, I don't know how many more million people. Um, Someone said 40, I don't know. 40 million people. That's, that's not bad at all. Oh, I mean, it could be anything. Someone else at 1.5 billion. <laughs> yeah. um, anything. How did you manage to get involved in doing this sport hey, gig? I mean, it seemed to me that it was it was a bit rushed, actually. I mean, I only knew about it, was it a week thing. before. It was. I mean, they they just phoned up and said, um, you know, to the company, they said, you know, would anyone be up for doing that sort of thing? And I don't know, they suggested a few names and they chose us. Mm. So obviously you had the final decision on that. Was it um, kind of like a, um, a political thing that made you go up and do it? Maybe an awareness that you thought you needed to express or...? Well, I mean, it cost us quite a lot of money to do that. So we didn't do it... I mean, I did it simply for the reason that, the, you know, the, a couple of days previous or a day previous, I'd just seen this thing. Did you see it without that... that you know, the recent uh, oh, the flood troubles thing. in Africa. Yeah. And one tribe's been shifted over to somewhere else and they're, they're all dying, etc. And they got this 14-year-old kid and they'd left him to die in a, on an area of ground, you know, in a corner, because he was beyond help. And I just... It did it, you know, it just mucked up my head for the evening. Mm. There was I, you know, drinking tea, sitting on a sofa. I just had a meal, you know, and it was kind of like, oh, Christ. Looking at it, I just thought, you know, I wish I could do something about it. Mm, so you, you you came up to do that. Do you, do you think that the, the music business I mean, it, should be... Uh, well, I was only making, in a way, it's only a small gesture. Mm. That what I say I'll do, you know, won't have, have any effect on the situation out there. Just one small, you know, one small, as in small, gesture. As somebody in the music business, do you think that the, the pop world should get involved as it does in that sort of thing? Because since Live Aid and, of course, the Mandela gig as well, and now Sport Aid. Yeah, I mean, you know, if people have got a bit of cash, you know, some of these bands have, they should make a bit of a con contribution. I'm sure they do. Um, I mean, there's no one else left to champion them. I mean, the governments of the, of the world, you know, aren't interested. I mean, you know how our country stands on that sort of stuff. Mm, yeah. And... Uh, People on this island are quite unaware of what world opinion of the place is, the way we sort of deal with it. Even though we initiated that whole live aid, you know. Mm. No, I know on the day, it was a superb day. All the bands that were actually playing that day, they got a great reception. I suppose it was pretty good to you to play a non-Spear of Destiny crowd and receive a good reaction, because they were pretty good, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, it went down very well. I mean, uh, no one had any, any idea we were going to be there. And um, most of the people hadn't even heard of us anyway. It was, you know. Well, there's certainly actually since we mentioned that, and since the gig, the phone calls have been coming in saying, have you got any photos, got any more records, this, that, and other. There's a lot of interest created. Not only, say, yeah, absolutely. So there's quite a few people that we want to say hello to later on. Now, you're with the band, obviously, but whenever we see uh, Spirit Destiny LPs, etc., it's always just you. So was that band that you had with you on Sunday for the Sport A gigs, something for Sunday, or was it, is it the usual band that's with you for the rest of the gigs? That's my boys. <laughs> so, so where are they today? Oh, the boys, they're probably in a pub somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so another 20 minutes, you can join them, right? No, so that's that's the normal lineup. What is the lineup of the band, then? Well, it's the same... I've got two of the guys that did the, the album last time. There's Volker, you know, German guy on keyboards, and Pete on drums. And I've got my old guitarist, Alan St. Clair. He said he'd come and do the tour, you know, from SOD2. And, he, you know, he's always been a pal of mine, even before SOD2. You know, before I asked him to join the band, you know, I used to, I used to meet him up the West End, you know, in Denmark Street, and, you know, just sort of hang around. He was more of a pal. The fact that he played guitar was sort of like, 
incidental, really. <laughs> Apart from yourself, any remnants of the Theatre of Hate from the band that was with you now? No. But then Theatre of Hate was, like, finished in, what was it, 82, 83, something like that. Okay, well, tell me, we've got a new album to talk about and a new single, but I know the lady in the studio tonight is choosing one of the tracks. I'm going to choose this one, the one that charted for you recently, Never Take Me Alive. We'll play that one now. We're going to go as far as we can up to the news, and we'll split the way through that one and come back and talk to Kirk. So stay with us. More S.O.D. tracks, the new stuff, and I believe we've got a 12-inch there as well with some stuff on the B-side. No Destiny, the single. And here are the Virgin representatives running around with cups of coffee and cigarettes and things. Terrible. I'm trying to conduct an interview here, please. I don't know. My guest tonight is Kirk Brandon. You just heard, actually, Never Take Me Alive, Spear of Destiny. Um, we've got a few people, actually, have rung in to see if we can get some signed photos. I believe we've got some, haven't we? We have. We've got thumbs up there that Kirk's going to sign. Um, now, where do we get to? We're talking about, just ended up, just before that record, talking about Theatre of Hate. That, that disbanded. Why, why did you move away from that one? Why did you leave that and get away from it? And we'll leave the past it behind just in a minute. It just came to an end. Just natural, really. Um... Luke left, he'd had enough, he was just sort of getting out of control, it really was. Did you take time out to think about it before forming SOD? Do you call it SOD for sure? I mean, it must, it must I call it SOD. Yeah, SOD, it's okay. A lot of people call me, like, <laughs> call me SOD <laughs> and more, yeah. and a lot worse. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't blame them. I must have the same people as you. So, did, did, you, did you take some time out before you actually got SOD No, together? I blundered straight into SOD1, which was, looking back, the album has its ups and downs. The band, it was just down. SOD2, that was quite good. And uh, the last one, SOD3, I, I think, <laughs> without getting a bit personal, some people got it wrong. <laughs> standing at the front of the stage. <laughs> but, you know, they're all nice chaps, you know, all nice fellas, so... Well, when I was checking up on you, I know that uh, the cancellation of the 87 gig, you Reading Festival, that seemed to be a massive big hype thing. Were you, were you ill or something, or a bad leg or something? Well, my old man went to that, expecting to see me, mm. and it came over the tannoy, you know, over the speakers, that... Uh, i have broken legs in a car crash, or I don't know, some old waffle. Yeah. But in actual fact, I, w I was in hospital, but it wasn't that. I'd, um, I've got a, a blood syndrome. So, you know, it takes the form of arthritis, and it just sort of, you know, makes the, all the joints swell up, and it's quite painful. Is that an uh, intermittent thing, or is it finished now? It sort of turns out about once every six, eight years. Mm. And I, you know, when in the hospital, come out, went in, come out. About seven, eight months lying on the couch, and uh, then crutches and walking stick, and uh, I bet they're walking around. And back on stage in full swing on Sunday. What about the live scene? I know that you just added an extra date to your tour. What is going to be the, the current uh, SOD tour? What, what date by date? Well, we got, we got one more. Yeah, well, I know you just actually, I was reading up that I uh, don't actually, all I know is you it starts got, the 22nd in Leeds. Yeah, and you've got November the 8th to do at Leicester, which apparently is a, a new date, which says here currently. Is it? Yeah, yeah. So that must be quite, how many weeks is that? Is it a, a big tour? It's only about three, it's not a long one. Is it a university one, or are you doing uh, sort of major city halls and things? There's a few city halls in it, but a lot of it's just like, you know, universities. And are you headlining that one? What, what about a support tour? You've you already sort of thought of somebody to take with you on support, or are you just going to do it yourself? I've no idea. That's been lined up by uh, Uncle Tell, a <laughs> razor, <laughs> my old razor. So, but do you have a hand in that? Because, you know, obviously you're, you're listening to the radio. You're Basically, no. No? Basically, no. So you just hope that the people that they sort of get along with you is going to at least match along with... Uh, oh, well, Terry tries to sort of sort out, you know, who's going to go on it. But a lot of the time, you know, it's down to money. Mm. It's down to people pay to come on our tour because the tour loses so much money that you have to, it's like balancing it a bit. You get people to pay to come on. It's normal practice, you know, with virtually all bands. It's quite interesting you should say that because uh, a lot of people, I think the misconception is that someone goes on tour and they clean up. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. How, how much does it roughly cost to put a tour together? Or, or even well, let's see, that last tour I did with, you know, with the band, we went, we played England and then we went around Europe and that lost 22 grand. Dear me. P 
people said we were just loco for doing it. Well, you've got to get out there, haven't you, and actually promote yourselves live as a live band, because you're very serious well, to, about the live To be honest, you know, that's been my life, and that's what I'm into. Going out playing live, and the day that I don't do that is the day that I'm finished. Okay, you know? well, we're looking towards the news. We've got the 12 inch of the new single, which is So In Love With You. We'll play the flip side of So In Love With You. Is it going to be off the album, the flip side as well? I know some 12 inches won't contain no, the flip this one side. won't be on the album. Okay, this is a one off and then a 12 inch, Spirit Destiny. This is March or Die. Oh, the flip side of the 12 inch single, the new album, Pen Island Viking. The regional program we call the Yorkshire Radio Network. Spirit Destiny. <laughs> My guest tonight, or should I say guest, Kirk Brandon from Spear of Destiny. A track from that LP again, The Epic Years. This is Mickey. It's Mickey, Spear of Destiny. Kirk, Kirk Brandon's Brandon. indisposed at the moment. He's on the telephone. We might actually put that person live on the end at the moment. We'll take a quick commercial break and we'll come back and play some more tracks from Spear of Destiny. In fact, give us a call. Our number is 0482 224 3. 10 past 9. Hi. Live on a Thursday night. Listen, tell you what, Carl, uh, Kirk's on the phone. Kirk, if I actually, you put those headphones on and we switch the switch, you can still talk to that person now on the phone. If we flick the switch and you put the headphones on, that lady, is, is it Lisa or Mark, is it? No, no, this is a mum. This is a mum. So, hello, hello mum. Hello? Hello. It's all right, you can hear it on your headphones. Are they getting at you? Yeah, no, 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 no. How are you? Who is it? This is Tim Finley. Can you just do me a favour first? Yeah. Can you go and turn your radio off? Yeah. And then come back to the phone, quick oh, as you can. Well, I've got to tape it. Oh, well, it's all right, it was still tape. Oh, all right. Okay. Are so you sure? I'm, sh I'm positive. I'm positive. Oh, <laughs> it's, all good. it's a live show tonight. I, lo I love live interviews. They're brill. Uh, and that was, is that Lisa and Mark's mum you talked to? Just That's right. <laughs> <laughs> a big so they got her to take this, and uh, oh, she's on the on the phone talking to me. You know, she just got a new bow wow. I see, and I believe you're 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 quite a dog fan. Yeah, uh, English bull terriers. Have you got one yourself? <sighs> Unfortunately, no. Hello. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, are I, they all right now? Yeah. What's your name, incidentally? It's Anne. Hello, Anne. Welcome to the Yorkshire Radio Network. You're live on the air. There's millions of people listening oh, to you. Oh, joking. No, no. And you were talking to Kurt. Are you, are you a Spirit Destiny fan yourself? Oh, no. Oh, I probably weaned on them. You weaned on them. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I wasn't around in 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 the forties or whatever. I don't know. Is that is that a young lad? I know, but my son's his age, so. How, yeah. how, how old are you, incidentally, Kurt? Um, I'm 32. You're 32? You never are. I don't believe it. I don't not, believe it. He's lying. How are you about my age, Kurt? <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe you were right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's brilliant, that kid. So, Anne, um, what, what can we actually do for you? I believe you were, you were chatting him up for the last... You're uh, embarrassing me. Six oh, minutes go away, now. Kurt. Oh, he's a lovely lad. He really is a people's lad. Have you, have you been to see the band? Well, I've got all his records and all his old P's yeah. and all his singles uh -huh. and all his posters. My son goes, Mark. Did you did you go to the Sport Aid concert? Mark did on Sunday. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> well, Eight fifty for a good cause, though. Yeah, some, well, Mark went. There's and, some great uh, bands on. You missed out there, Anne. And uh, well, I was listening to Radio Allen, and I was really annoyed because they didn't really play much that I was hoping to hear. Mm. And uh, I kept phoning up and. No, Roger Brooks wasn't there to listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> He's the boss. He's never around. He, he doesn't listen to us. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I believe that uh, we've arranged uh, a couple of tickets for you. So yeah. we, I believe we've got the names. If you can give us a call a little later on, we'll take your address. Oh, down, okay? lovely. He's a good. He's a good lad. Okay. And he has been poorly, you know. I know. He's <laughs> take not, care of him. He's not the only one. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. So Thanks ever so much. You give it half an hour and call back, OK? Yes, and I we'll, will. And we'll take your details. OK. All right, then. Thanks. See you. Bye. Bye-bye, Kurt. Bye, Bye. Bye. <laughs> So it's a live show. I, I in fact, you, you are. I mean, she's actually quite, she sums up, you are quite a people's person, aren't you? You've got this sort of uh, a character. I'm a, a mum's, mum's <laughs> into me, I think. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a figure that, you, it's very cult oriented, isn't it? That you have a cult following. As well, a that's it, you know, it's, <clears throat> I'm not an overground artist. Mm. Uh, BBC Radio 1 won't play me. Well, that's, that's nothing new for them. I mean, I, yeah. don't get me wrong. I'm not asking to be played on Radio 1. That's good. Well, I don't think they would, period. Anyway, he would never take me alive as number 14. I only got two plays. Mm. Uh, you know, it's not, you know, it's not mainstream music. It's just a good job for independent radio, really, isn't it? For artists such as yourself that is getting some sort of airplay 
it's usually the specialised shows that deals with SOD and people like that. Big tired. Hello? Hello, Anthony? Oh, uh, can you just do us a favour, mate? Will you turn your radio off? Right, yeah. Now, please. Right. Thank you. And then come back to us. It's always the same. Well, incidentally, if anybody wants to ring in, turn your radio off because we are in delay and that means that we're ahead of you. So tell you're me. in delay? Oh, I get it. I didn't understand you the get it. Your, uh... <laughs> okay, now, go ahead. Kurt's waiting for your question. Oh, Kurt. Hello. 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 Jesus Christ. Um, no, just Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Um I've heard you with Sync Off. It's brilliant. Cheers, Absolutely fantastic. Nice. Nice one. And, um... Could you tell us something about what your new stuff's on, yeah, on your new album, what it's like? Um, it's pretty heavy gear actually, it's pretty heavy stuff. Uh, it's, it's really difficult without playing the album, I couldn't really tell you to be honest. We've got the new track coming up shortly actually, I think the best thing to do is wait out for the album there Patrick, it's coming out in October I believe Kurt, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd advise, you, I'd advise anyone to buy, you know, the the cassette or the CD because there's two tracks on it that are part of the album Soldier Soldier and Brave New World and they are as much the album as the rest of it I will I will tell you Patrick if I can butt in here that yeah. I heard we're on the live set at Sheffield last week I was just talking to Kurt there yeah, was a guitar right there, yeah. what, what, what was that track we were talking that about that was Dream Time Dream Time and, and The Price which they played live at Sheffield at Hillsborough Park on Sunday it was brilliant so I think the album would be well worth waking out for hey, right. Patrick thank you for your call ok cheers now cheers bye bye you should get a lot of people that are into it Spear of Destiny he says, not sounding surprised, but sounding that they're all on this line tonight. Who's on this line? Hello. Hello. Who's this? Jill. Jill, calling from? I'm Kai from Beverly. Hello, Jill. What's your question? I just want to get through to Kurt Brendan. You're through. Hello. Hello, Jill. Hi, Kurt. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Good girl. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I just, well, I've been following you since, um, the Rock, York Rock Festival. Yeah. I was doing a few times. Yeah. Question. Oh, it's with Eck on the Bunnyman, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, um, we've got all the collection right back to Pack and all that. And the only one we can't get hold of is the uh, Flexidus from that, um... Impossible to get off. It's, it's all collector stuff. Yeah, all that, all that eight stuff, darling, West, the Westworld album, everything is like, you know, I mean, I, <clears throat> I had my stuff nicked once again oh, about no. a year ago. Right, the guy the other day, I'm stuck on by your window. Yeah, that's exactly what I am. I went down to the, the geezer in the market and said, you know, have you got Nero <laughs> or Poppy? Yeah. Can I have to buy it, you know? Oh, we've got them. <laughs> so yeah. you, you managed to get them back then, did you, Kurt? Yeah, I've still got a few I haven't got. Yeah. I, haven't got I haven't got Nero and a few others. Yeah. Anything else before we say goodbye to you? Are we not ready to it? You certainly are, so well, we'll be very quick if you can. Yeah, we'll still enjoy it. We come from Goal, yeah. and um, we'll be seeing you at Salford and not in the right restaurant. Uh, we've just been waiting for our newsletters to come out. We've had a few newsletters, and um, we just got back from the States ourselves. We've just got a few American releases of beer, and uh, this, all these newsletters, newsletters that's been going out, we've just been like, waiting and waiting for album, and we're just glad that it's come out. And new stuff, so we'll just see you up next tour. That's so, right. If Cheers. you want to purchase some tickets on, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, a signed yeah. sign photo, oh, there's a couple of signed photos already, but like from your um, other press releases, but if you've got anything else, because we're like, you know, big fans and all that, you know. So, here we've got some photographs, we'll see what we can do. The best thing I can suggest is if you write to us and give us your name and address and an envelope, we'll send something back to you if we still have it, okay? Yeah, thanks a lot, Thank you for your call. All right, good night. Good luck. See ya. Cheers. See ya. See ya. That was uh, quite interesting, actually, the newsletter syndrome. Do you take care of your own fan club? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's taken care of by um, my manager, Till Razor, and myself. You know, we little home industry there. Mm. We sit around at Till's flat and, um, you know, we, we talk about what people write. It, it, the stuff that gets written in is unbelievable. It, it's almost like we're part of people's families, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, like some guy's got leukemia and I can't, I wouldn't embarrass him by mentioning it, but, you know, we get a lot of, well, some people call it strange requests, mm. but, you know, it, it, some people, we've had a few people that have died on us, <laughs> you know, that have, like, written in and stuff like that, and, you know, I've phoned them up and sent them stuff, obviously, you know, I couldn't 
go around and all that, but uh, you know, it's incredibly how touching people do take us to heart. I mean, I, I don't honestly feel I deserve it, to be honest. Mm. I, I'm, you know, I'm an okay geezer, but I'm, I'm, I don't know, I, I, I feel sort of I a bit I'm humbled by a lot of these people that write in. But, you know, they do write in and we do, you know, we do write out to them. So we will take a very quick break, and um, so the phone lines are going again, we'll take two more calls and we'll play the new record and then we'll uh, let you go, I'm sure you've got to eat tonight sometime. We'll take a break, the people on the phone, hang on in now, we'll be with you in just a moment. <coughs> on a Thursday night, is it Thursday? I just can't think where we are. On the phone we've got a lady called Gaynor, hello Gaynor. Hello. Uh, you're calling from which part of the world? Sheffield. Okay, we're on the phone to Kurt right now, go ahead. Hi Gaynor. Hi Kurt. Are you right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what can we do for you? Can you just say happy birthday to my best friend Nicola, please? <laughs> happy birthday, Nicola. <laughs> Are you big Spirit Destiny fans on Gainer? The biggest. Did you go to Sheffield on uh, Sunday? No, we were, uh, we were out, but we didn't know they were on. No, it was very short notice that one for It was, it was only a couple of days. Mm, only a couple of days. Although we trailed it as much as we could. Uh, so you're waiting out for the new album then? Yeah, we went into the shop to get his new single. Which is have it in. Oh, which shop was that? We'll go around and break the windows. It's in Johnfield Woodhouse. Oh, well, look, it should be out very soon. It's on the Virgin Record label. In fact, I can give you the number. It's VS1123, okay? Thanks. Hey, Mr. Cook, when is he going on tour again? The tour starts uh, October 22nd. And do you come Leeds. to Sheffield? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing Sheffield. I don't know where. Well, well, I can't tell you the exact date. Oh, right. As soon as we get the dates, again, and we'll let the whole world know, okay, on the oh, radio thanks session. thanks a lot. Okay, thank you for your thanks. call. Yeah, thanks. Good luck. Good luck. Bye. Uh, one more call, and then we'll play the record, okay? And uh, this one, this time, don't know where we're going this time, on the switchboard. Hello, who's calling the Yorkshire Radio Network? Who's this? Hey, it's... Good call, Kevin. I just got... To get London, please. Yes, go ahead. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin. Go ahead, Kevin. Right, Kevin. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I just like to think about your thoughts on uh, Stan's new album, you know, Crazy Pink Revolvers. Uh, <clears throat> I heard a couple of tracks. Someone played it to me in a shop. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. Do you think um, you went to one of music at all? I mean, I, I couldn't answer that one. I mean... Stanley's still my pal. Yeah. You know, we've been pals for a long time. We lived together for about, in Chelsea for about three years. And, uh, you know, I'm behind whatever Stanley does, because he's a great guy. And I want to see him do well. He's getting some action in the States. Mm -hmm. You know, with his, you know, with the record company, and uh, I hope it takes off for him. I really do. Well, I'm pretty impressed with myself. So, uh, the new single that you think is going a bit commercial, is it, is it due to new backing from Virgin or...? No, I don't think it's commercial, to be honest. I mean, it's a song about a suicide, I mean, <laughs> come <laughs> on! <laughs> tell you what, Kevin, have you... I'll tell you what, Kevin, yeah. we've got FM on are you ready at the moment. Yeah, it's come upstairs. Okay, we'll get back to it, because I'll play the new single in just a moment, all right? Uh, cheers. Okay. Single's full of good cheer. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, ta-da. ta mate. Right, as you can tell, I mean, with the, uh, the, in the influx of telephone calls, a very popular band, and we're talking about cult band. Before we do leave you, what about the States? How well does Spirit go over in the States? Um, there's some interest now, but there hasn't been up until now. That was due to the fact that you know, I was signed to CBS for three and a half years and uh, they refused to release, this is ridiculous here, they refused to release the album it anywhere else in the world apart from two countries, England and Brazil. <laughs> Brazil? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh, I know actually you've got quite strong opinions on the music industry as a whole really. We were just talking it's about... It's full of fun. Uh, we were just talking about a certain act which was so big. Um, obviously I think in the business it's it's not really the dumb thing to give other acts a hard time or do you like to say what you feel about a band? No, I don't. I, music is down to preference. Mm. You know, it's just simply down to who's listening at the time. You, you can't slag someone off. The music is just Music is for enjoyment, it's not to sort of, you know, get stuck into other people and their characters. This is it, this is it. Well, I mean, it's, it's so varied, come on. 
We could be here all night, I can feel it, but we'll get on with the new record, we'll let you go. We've got some names here to get uh, photographs out to, and um, I think you've also got some seven-inch singles we can sign as well. Thanks for taking so much time out, actually. It's more than we actually anticipated, but we've enjoyed having you. Right. And uh, we'll play the new single. It's about suicide. Uh, how do you, your lyrics, where did you find that from? Is it from personal experience? Yeah, it was from quite a while ago. This is a long time. I'm talking about ten years. Some of it was, it was very close, and it just sort of. I've had this song hanging around for a long, long, long time, and then, you know, when I was ill, I was just sort of. It just came to me at last. You know, I'd had the the music, and I'd had a, a chorus to it, but I never had any verse, and the verse just suddenly came to me. And I thought, yeah, that's it, right. And it just sort of come together about ten years later or something. Okay, on Helen Penn Island Viking collectively, the Yorkshire Radio Network, there's the verse and the chorus in for the new single out on Virgin, Spirit Destiny. Kurt, once again, thank you. Thank you. This is so in love with you. Watch out for the video as well. Single from the forthcoming album from Spirit of Destiny, So In Love With You. Incidentally, the album is called The Price You Pay. Um, we're going to be able to get a, some copies of that, I hope, soon when it comes out. We'll also give you the, the correct tour dates of when Spirit of Destiny are playing in the Yorkshire Radio Network area. Who knows, maybe next time they come back and we bribe them enough, they may come in and talk to us again. I might care, it might anyway.